Ebola is not just hurting people's health in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. The outbreak is also hurting the nation's economies. Prevention efforts are crimping commerce, travel, and trade, and straining national budgets. Joining me now is economics reporter Jim Randall. And uh, Jim, we're hearing about the implications of this outbreak, which actually economic effects could actually be staggering. Well, the, uh, the World Bank has a new report. They're saying that it's very already a very serious matter. And if, if more isn't done to contain this, they use words like catastrophic to describe what could happen. They're, and they're talking about uh, numbers from the low billions into tens of billions of dollars. It's very hard to predict how this is going to play out. So they have they've have two scenarios, one where it gets contained relatively soon, which would be which would uh, be help hopeful and helpful, but and one where it doesn't, and uh, that one is the one where they're talking tens of billions of, of dollars. Now, you you have uh, covered the SARS epidemic for, for VOA when you were in China, and uh, so you've seen uh, he's seen what can obviously happen uh, to normal life when people are facing these dangerous effects. So, talk about kind of what happened there, and and how's it comparing? What happened in SARS was that uh, the impact of people trying to stay away uh, was actually more expensive than the actual direct cost of losing uh, worker time, losing people's lives, uh, and it was, this impact was multiplied. The economic impact is a big deal here because uh, Dr. Jim Young Kim, who's president of the World Bank, he's also an infectious disease expert, one of the best, he says that uh, this is a disease of poverty and inequality. And one of the reasons that it's spreading, one of the reasons it's a problem, is the lack of infrastructure, the very poor infrastructure in these very poor countries. And so if these countries suffer more economic damage, there'll be fewer resources to put into badly needed uh, medical infrastructure, and that's going to uh, leave them open to this disease and others. Now, they're also talking about if this disease starts to spread uh, to Senegal and Guinea, which are larger economies, which are neighboring uh, these these countries, then that's when things can really become a big, big. Well, clearly, it's it, if it if it hits uh, the larger populations, it could spread. But there is a little bit of hope, and, and I, there there was cases in Nigeria. Uh, the public health officials jumped on that aggressively and and quickly and uh, effectively so far. It seems that there were cases, there was some transmission, but they were able to stop it. And so that, that's a little bit of hope in an otherwise fairly bleak landscape. And so why is it in the end having greater economic effects, uh, I guess this time around than say, I guess in, in with diseases in the past, this seems to be having well, a, a different, a, a larger scale effect. Pre previous Ebola epi epidemics happened uh, out in the bush in very sparsely populated areas where you could isolate things. There were fewer people to get sick. And so even if they, even if containment efforts weren't terribly effective, uh, there were fewer potential victims. And so that, those epidemics kind of burned themselves out. Now, I guess what's being done uh, to counter the effects? Now, I mean, well, they're pouring money into it. The U.S. military sent thousands of people over to build hospitals. There's a screaming, crying need for more uh, doctors, more nurses, more health workers, you know, to do basic kinds of supportive care. There's no magic bullet to cure this, mm -hmm. but they can uh, help people, uh, support them, and uh, make it more likely they'll survive this terrible onslaught. So perhaps, I guess, a wake-up call for those those countries affected and certainly the international community maybe to get ahead of things in the future. Seems right. So we'll see what happens. All right, VOA is Jim Randall, our economics reporter. Thanks a lot, Jim.